Well, we, do, we do measure, our, uh, even in this case, uh, uh, but um, remember, our first uh, priority, uh, the, the, the rationale, let's say, of setting up a uh, 16 film that plan in China is to enhance our access to the growing Chinese market. So, you know, uh, while we do measure the ROI of the plant there, you also have to take into account that the increased sales that this plant is going to bring to us. And, uh, but, but to answer your question simply, we, we still measure the ROI, but, but uh, the ROI, well, since the investment is really relatively small, frankly. Uh, thinking, you are thinking beyond 2016, and uh, you, you referred back to the earlier target that we set that uh, will grow profit 10% a year. It's a good answer, and let me try to answer it now. Did I say it's a good answer, or did I say it's a good question? <laughs> it's a good question, yeah. It's a good question. Let me try to answer it now. <laughs> uh, we set that target in uh, late 2014, I believe. We said that uh, we want to grow, we said that in the next five years, we want to grow profit, actually operating profit, not necessarily net income, no. operating profit, 10% a year. And that was more than a year and a half ago, I believe. Much has happened since then. Last year was a difficult year. I said 10% compounded the annual growth rate. Now back when we set the target in late 2014, we were looking at a very good, we thought we were looking at a very good 2015. Now, 2015 turned out to be disappointing, as everyone knows. But we still managed to grow our operating profit by about 10%. And uh, 2016 uh, will also be, it will be, I think it will be better than 2015. So we are at least mildly optimistic about 2016. So we have now, as Mark said, uh, identified our growth in 2016 as 5 to 10 percent. Now, what he meant was revenue, but I was, but Laura also said that the, our structural probability actually is still improving. So I'm saying now, while Mark meant revenue, I'm saying now that our operating profit will also grow 5 to 10 percent this year. Hopefully 10 percent, or even hopefully, even more hopefully, more than 10 percent, okay? Mm -hmm. So, all right, what I'm saying is that we set the 10-year compounded annual growth rate a year and a half ago when things looked much brighter. Much has happened, but we still managed for one year, and it appears now we'll manage for the second year of this five year, about 10%. But I'm not repeating 
my pledge, my, my prediction, that 17, 18, 19 will continue to grow at 10% a year. We, I think that the likelihood of, um, well, you, you just look at the semiconductor market, uh, the prediction about the future semiconductor bull market. It's two, three percent a year, you know, for the next five or ten years. But we have a premium. We have a growth premium. Now, a year and a half ago, I thought our growth premium of revenue and profit growth premium was uh, at least 5%. Uh, be, be, because back then, the prediction about the semiconductor growth was uh, better than it is now. Now, I still think we have a premium of some magnitude. Uh, but uh, you will hear from me sometime uh, what our rolling five-year projection is. The last time you heard it was a year and a half ago, and uh, so far we have, fulfilled, we have fulfilled it, even though the circumstances were much more difficult than we than they than, than than we thought they were going to be when we made the prediction when we made the target, meaning that our growth rate, our revenue growth rate, top line growth rate, is likely to be higher than the uh, semiconductor uh, market growth rate. It's because in two very simple words. It's because we are everyone's foundry. Being everyone's foundry has advantage of participating in the growth of whoever succeeds the best. Whoever customer succeeds the best. We participate in it. And we have been everyone's foundry ever since, well, maybe not when we started it, but certainly for the last 10, 15 years, we have been virtually everybody's foundry. And we intend to remain that way. Being everyone's foundry, fulfilling our mission of being the trusted technology and capacity provider to the IC industry. It means that whoever in our customer, among our customers, succeed the best, we participate in their success. That's why I think that uh, we have a premium of growth over the total IC market. Now, let's talk about the bottom line. Now that's where structural profit really comes in as important. And we want to manage it such that the bottom line grows proportionately with the top line. And uh, you know, so just keep that in mind. And then we are improving it, actually. We're improving the, the structure of poverty. We're improving what we call the standard gross margin, as Laura said. And we have improved it by several percentage points in the last few years. It depends on, in fact, if I, I usually look back to six years ago. And since then, we have improved by at least five, by 500 basis points. And we expect it to improve. Now, being everyone's boundary and 
maintaining or improving our structural probability still further put us in the right place. And while I cannot answer you at this moment that 17, 18, 19 will still be 10 year a year, 10% a year uh, profit growth uh, years, I cannot answer that, but I'm just saying that I have, have my, I put my trust in our ability to to be those two things, to, to maintain, to do those two things. First, be everyone's boundary, and second, maintaining our structural profit bridge. I should say that uh, we have used the phrase that our objective is um, to enhance our access to the Chinese market. Uh, I've used that phrase, we have used that phrase uh, quite a few times. So. And uh, I must say that uh, uh, we, don't, we don't say that in vain. We say that uh, with some degree of assurance from the uh, authorities. Some degree of assurance that building a plant there will indeed enhance our access to the Chinese market. And reversely, you know, not building a pen there would not enhance it. Thank you. All right, uh, next question comes from 